So you're looking for a smartphone, but you're trying to buy one based solely on speed. Now, which one? There are so many popular smartphones nowadays, and in this video, I just wanted to clarify things just a little bit. I took five of the most popular smartphones nowadays, and I wanted to make a speed test showing you the comparison between all five. There seems to be a trend with all the phones nowadays. No home buttons, the screens are getting much larger while bezels shrink, and it's a trend that I'm absolutely loving. Of course, among other things, speed is a very important factor for me personally when deciding between a phone. You don't want to get stuck behind the competition. So how do these top five smartphones of the year so far compare? And I know they're going to get updated soon, and I'll do this later on, but for now, this is what I have to work with. So there are actually a couple new arrivals. For one, the one OnePlus 3T. This is with the Snapdragon 821, just an updated processor, same design. This is by far the cheapest phone I will be showing you guys in today's video, so do keep that in mind. It is a budget phone, but it doesn't have necessarily budget performance as it has the latest processor. So next up also is the LG G6. So this one is brand new. It's got that curved screen display. You know, they made a big mistake. They released this thing too late after the Samsung Galaxy S8. In any case, these are the processors we are working with. So three different kind, the Snapdragon 835, A21, and Apple's A10 chip. It's interesting to note that the three on the right use the same processor but have different clock speeds and that the cheapest OnePlus 3T has the most RAM. In any case, let's get started. So I'm starting with a real world test. Guys, I didn't put icons on this one, so uh, it may be a little difficult to follow. But essentially, we're starting and we're going to start with the clock. So starting a timer and moving on to go ahead and begin application loading and then reloading in a round two. So the iPhone is just powering through these and uh, it's already on the Photoshop Express. So it's actually rendering an 8K image. Most are pretty close at this point with the LG G6 coming in at last uh, to load the Photoshop image. Now, next up, Minecraft. The iPhone powers through that real quick. Galaxy isn't far behind and moving on to Super Mario Run already, while the three on the Snapdragon 821, as kind of expected, are lagging behind right now. iPhone is already on asphalt and beginning to load that. And in my previous test with just the S8 and iPhone, you could tell that the iPhone loads the games much more efficiently and much faster faster. Not that that's necessarily that much of a better thing because the Galaxy keeps up very, very well. So the iPhone is already on Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, while most of the other phones are lagging behind. The Galaxy S8 with its Snapdragon 835 is only one application behind. So we already know how those compete, but what about the others? I honestly had more hopes for the LG G6, but it seems to be in last place right now with all the other devices already moving on to Grand Theft Auto. So after this, we're gonna go ahead and do a round two just to see how many of these applications the devices have reloaded or if they've kept running in the background. The iPhone was really, really efficient at that with the Galaxy reloading most of them in the past. But in any case, we are on Yelp, now on Video Shop. We're going to go ahead and load about a 1 minute 27 second video that is 4K and it is in full quality. So it's not going to be the easiest video to export, but the iPhone begins compiling that data with the Galaxy S8 just now starting the test. So loading the very same one, it's going to take a lot longer. So some portion of this I did fast forward, guys. I don't want you to sit here and watch all this compiling happen. But as the last devices are powering through the very last applications, the OnePlus 3T is ahead. And that's kind of surprising. For a phone that costs the least amount out of all of these, it's not performing the least amount out of all of them. So I'm actually very proud of that one. It's already on the video test, importing that 4K video, while the uh, LG G6 is still loading the last poker game. Interesting, it is so far behind at this point while all of the last ones are working on the video rendering already. So interesting thing is comebacks are a thing and the LG G6 makes up most of its time doing the video rendering. In any case, the iPhone has finished with two minutes and 44 seconds, impressive. Actually going back and reloading all of those apps, you can tell that most of them have not been reloaded. They're just sitting there exactly where they left them. Now, that is amazing. On Apple's part, they have some awesome optimization right there. So once again, the iPhone is victorious. The Apple A10 series chip is a marvel, technological marvel on Apple's end. And this thing has finished in first place with two minutes, 44 seconds and second round with just 33 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this part, but seems like the Galaxy S8 isn't too far behind the iPhone 
with a round of five minutes and 36 seconds. Now the Photoshop app crashed on the Galaxy S8 on round two for whatever reason, but overall most of the apps are not loading properly. They are actually all refreshed. So the Galaxy S8 has to start from scratch in order to get those loaded. Now the LG G6 actually finished before the other two. Like I said, it made up most of its time on the video rendering and it's about five minutes, 59 seconds. So not too bad, but in most of the uh, tasks like loading these small applications, it was really, really slow. It was just the video rendering, the higher clock speed really showed its true colors there. Uh, but otherwise it's in third place now. The OnePlus 3T finished in fourth with a time of six minutes and eight seconds. The Pixel, I don't know, it's not doing too well even though it's using pretty much the same processor, just a slightly lower clock speed. It finished last with six minutes and 34 seconds. So here is the final result. One round of loading apps from scratch with nothing open, round two with all of them open in the background. The OnePlus 3T out of all of the Android phones was the most efficient with that six gigabytes of RAM at reloading application. So in day-to-day -day life, the OnePlus 3T is going to be the more useful of most of the Android phones. That's actually quite amazing for a budget phone. Again, this thing has surprised me. So I gave it third place just because of the round two, even though round one one was technically in fourth place. So next up, I just wanted to go ahead and do a startup test in three, two, one, and I managed to synchronize them to start at the same time. The LG G6 didn't make it easy with the power button on the back. So this doesn't really say much, but it's a fun little test that I wanted to see uh, regardless and very, very close in between with the iPhone and the Galaxy S8. The iPhone managed to start absolutely first and the Galaxy S8 not far behind. So third place was the LG G6. And then it's just a battle between the Google Pixel and the OnePlus 3T. I haven't really said much about the Google Pixel, but it's a phone that actually surprises me with its simplicity. Even though it seems to be last in most of the tests, uh, the OnePlus 3T finished in fourth. The Google Pixel is a phone that, you know, it's hard to describe. It's just simple. It does everything you need it to. It's very clean. Uh, it, it just works very well. It's like the iPhone version of Android, if that makes any sense at all. But moving on, I wanted to do some synchronized tasks and apps launching first off rendering that 8k image was just a second faster on the iphone 7 plus i thought it would take a little bit longer here uh, but the iphone is incredibly efficient at doing tasks like these that demand a lot of firepower video rendering photo rendering it does very very well uh, next up loading asphalt 8 it's a game this is one area the iphone is going to excel at as it always has and it's in absolutely first place once again. The Galaxy S8 is in third with the OnePlus 3T in fourth, LG G6 in fifth, and Google Pixel last. Man, that's kind of disappointing about the Pixel. It seems to be the slowest of the bunch. Uh, San Andreas went ahead and loaded that. Surprisingly, the iPhone didn't win this one. The Galaxy S8 actually loaded the actual game faster than the iPhone 7 Plus. Very surprising there. LG G6 was last on this one. Now I wanted to get some actual numbers here. So I know, I know the iPhone in the real world test is more powerful, but what about the actual benchmarks? So loading Geekbench on all of these devices, Geekbench 4 that is, I wanted to get some idea of on paper how all of these phones compare. And my prediction, the iPhone first, of course, uh, it even finished the test first. So it's got a multi-core 5954, 3538 single. Galaxy S8 finishes last, but it does have an insane 6,202 for the multi-core score. That's thanks to the new Snapdragon 835 and its eight cores. Now we can see here that Qualcomm is trying desperately to catch up to Apple. It overtook it in the multi-core score with its Snapdragon 835, but the single is just lacking. So it's got almost half of the score of the iPhone there. Next up, I wanted to get an idea of the GPUs in these phones. So most of the Android ones have Adreno GPUs. The other one is made by PowerVR in the iPhone. So uh, that one, of course, finishes first. But how it stacks up is quite surprising. Galaxy S8 is not too far behind with about 10,000 points difference with the OnePlus 3T coming in third place and the LG G6 finishing last. So again, very surprising. The OnePlus 3T is very, very capable of a phone. You get performance almost on par with the top end smartphones. Uh, lastly, I just wanted to take a look at the fingerprint sensor speed. So with a synchronized unlocking, in three, two, one, and uh, 
overall pretty quick. I mean, none of these are going to be slow fingerprint readers. I've actually used all of them extensively and they all work very, very well. So as a finishing statement, I just wanted to touch bases on which of these phones is the best value for the money. Now, all of them are pretty good in performance. The Google Pixel on the spectrum of speed was the absolute worst with the iPhone being in first place. But price wise, you're getting so much more for your money on the lower end with the OnePlus 3T. It's really keeping up with some of the biggest phones here, but still at almost half of the price tag. That is amazing. So the iPhone being one of the most expensive here with the LG G6, the G6, I have to say, is the one least worth your money. Seriously, I don't know why, but I think they priced this thing too high. They released it too close to the S8, and the S8 blows the G6 out of the water completely while being cheaper than it. The OnePlus 3T, guys, I'm going to have to say is the winner here just based on value. In any case, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this comparison. It was not easy to make, but it was so worth seeing how all of the top smartphones compared to one another. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace.